Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has warned South Africans to prepare for load shedding on most days over the next few months and is also seeking more money from government. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the latest developments and the outlook for the power system. Hi Terence. Hi. Why has the system deteriorated to this point? Well, I think it's a p issue of running these plants, the coal-fired fleet, which is a big fleet, uh, far too uh, hard for far too long and not maintaining to the codified protocols or the maintenance regime. That was admitted to this week that there, has, there have been these uh, maintenance regimes in place, but really the only power station in the fleet that's been maintained in terms of the protocols um, is the nuclear power station, the Kubrick power station, and the rest of the fleet hasn't. And the, the deferment of maintenance has been done for various reasons. Uh, we know about uh, during that uh, period after the load shedding incident of 2008 that uh, there was a need to rebuild confidence in the uh, South African economy and, and, whether, and South Africa was about to host the, the Football World Cup, the FIFA World Cup. And there was a decision taken, a policy decision by government that the light should stay on. That policy decision then filtered into ESCOM. Um, and there was a dis uh, the, the, that was the policy that was implemented, that the lights should stay on during that period. And to keep the lights on, we started to use more of the open cycle gas turbines down in the Western Cape. So we started seeing a lot bigger amounts of money being spent on diesel from sort of 100,000 rand a year and 500,000 rand a year. It's now climbed to over 10 billion rand a year that we're spending on diesel. And that's really to, to keep the lights on and to create space for maintenance. And we also deferred uh, maintenance during that period. Um, so it was a policy decision, it was a directive to keep the lights on. So uh, that, that policy really, uh, there was a lot of warnings at the time from a number of commentators that it could be unsustainable. And apparently the board uh, made the decision last year early that it was not a sustainable thing anymore to just keep the lights on. And I think they approached the shareholder and government to say, that we need a, a new approach. And then later in the year, we started to see that uh, Eskom uh, started to give the signal that they would load shed if uh, they needed to uh, uh, because of the lack of uh, capacity or reserve margin. And then in no this November, when the coal silo collapsed at Majuba, that pushed us over the edge and we started uh, lo load shedding for a few days. And then again in December, we saw load shedding incidents. And then we've already had our first day of load shedding in January 2015. And the warning is, and if you look at the Eskom calendar, the heat map, um, for the next uh, few months, or three months, till the end of summer, that they literally every day of a working week, uh, there's a risk of load shedding. It is in this red um, column. And um, that the system remains vulnerable. And the only way maybe to avoid that is to get some money to put uh, into the diesel purchases uh, to keep about 2,000 megawatts spinning so that uh, for longer, so not during, just during peak times, so that the, uh, the, the, the space is created for maintenance and there's a bit of a gap in the incidents uh, where there's an incident and uh, we, we don't have a load shedding episode. But the current scenario where there is no money for diesel, or the no visibility of the money for diesel, is that the warning is that we, we're going to have load shedding and it, it, uh, there's going to be efforts made to try and communicate that better, uh, stick to the, um, to the schedules um, and try and get through it uh, as, 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 as best as possible. But I think um, every time we load shed, uh, South Africans, uh, their confidence is sapped, business confidence is sapped. So it's a big decision and uh, it's a big shift from both government and Eskom and it's going to have not just pain for Eskom and its reputation and for uh, citizens during uh, that low, those load shedding and it's, but it's going to have long-term implications for this economy. It puts totally on the back burner South Africa's beneficiation and aspiration. It really makes vulnerable our, our reindustrialization plans and our growth, I think, is going to be affected for some time. Eskom is also seeking another three billion rand from government. Why is this? Well, this is all about diesel. So they have a budget um, in the sense that es uh, NERSA, the, the regulator, has given them a five-year tariff path. In that five-year tariff path, there is an amount set aside for diesel. Now, these plants are really supposed to be running for uh, two, three, four hours a day. 
But as I said to you earlier, <coughs> we've been running these plants closer to 12 hours a day to create the space uh, for maintenance and to keep the lights on. So now, if Eskim, during the next couple of months till the end of its financial year, so we're looking at February and March, they don't have a budget for additional diesel. That, that gap is 3 billion rand. And they've, they're saying that they would like to get that 3 billion rand uh, somewhere from the shareholder, from government, so that they can you know, reduce the prospect of that heat map becoming a reality, that load shedding heat map becoming a reality. So instead of every single day of every working week, maybe it will be more sporadic than that. So they've approached government with a, with a plan and they say they, you know, that they, they have to have visibility of how they're going to uh, recover these costs that they're going to be spending on diesel. At the moment, they don't have any visibility through either the tariff or through some sort of injection. There, there is this 20 billion rand that uh, government uh, is going to be injecting into ISKIN, but that's not about operational costs. That's about uh, the other elements of uh, shoring up the balance sheet so that they can continue with the build program because the build projects are over budget and behind schedule. And, it's, and, and the fact that they're producing less e energy and there's lower demand in the system, they're also getting less revenue. So it's really, Eskim's in a perfect financial storm. They're getting buffeted from every uh, angle. And the, the immediate short-term remedy, and uh, it really is a short-term remedy, is this three billion rand. It's a lot of money. And uh, government is, um, is having to mull over this proposal from Eskim. And I think we saw a very high level, we've set, they've set up this war room which has got uh, DOE, uh, that's the Department of Energy, the Department of Public Enterprises, and a lot of technocrats from government and um, um, Eskom looking at this proposal and other proposals that are part of a five-point plan to stabilize the electricity system. And then we saw yes, uh, this week that um, uh, Deputy uh, President Sura Ramaphosa, who's been given oversight on around the turnaround at Eskom, uh, visited the utility to get some insight into the plan. But I think uh, the next big step is going to have to either come from the president or from the finance, probably the finance minister, to say, here is the three billion, this is where it's sourced from, and uh, we're going to be injecting it immediately into Eskom so that they can find, uh, the, the, have the wherewithal to buy the diesel to get us through the next two months. But, you know, it's a lot of money to spend on something that you're just going to burn in a matter of hours. And um, I think the warning that we've got this week is that load shedding is an option, uh, it's, but I think also uh, the, the cost of unserved energy is multiples of that diesel cost. So, and the confidence uh, that, it, uh, that it saps from the economy and from individuals in South Africa is also something that government's going to have to think about seriously uh, before saying no to Eskom. So I think it's not a no yet, um, and the, there's serious discussions and deliberations underway but I think we need to hear sooner rather than later whether that money is going to Eskom's way. Are there any bright spots on the electricity horizon? There are very few. <coughs> I think I suppose the fact that there's this uh, war room and there's this cabinet level acknowledgement of the crisis that we're in and there's a lot of energy going into trying to sort out the immediate, the medium and long term issues at Eskom. Part of sorting out the long term issues is this getting much more down to the maintenance business. Uh, which is going to be painful for all of us because it's, you know, although it's good for the long-term uh, sustainability of the system, the short-term, they're saying, you know, Tadisa Matono suggested this week, it's going to take as long to get back to a steady state as it took to get into this bad state, which is years. Uh, I think, um, uh, you know, that's the maintenance deferments took, took years um, and it's really crept up on us and it, we are, it's a painful period. But the other bright spots is, is, I suppose, that outside of Eskom, there's a lot of things starting to happen. The coal base load tender, which has been waited for for two years now, has finally been released. And I think there'll be a, a lot of uh, um, excitement around trying to bid for that. Um, the allocation of 1,600 megawatts looks quite low. There's also, uh, against the 2,500 allocation uh, in the determination, um, the other thing is that they've put a 51% um, uh, threshold. Well, that foreigners can't have more than 49% in the project. That could be also an issue because as we've seen with the renewables program, um, the foreigners have been a, a key element of that program. So we'll have to see how we navigate that, but at least the tender's out. Uh, and we, start, we should start seeing having visibility of bids 
by June. And then we've got the DSM in a, uh, program that's a demand side management. That program, also there's tenders out around that. We also seeing the solar water heating program, which has been in a bit of limbo, moving back from Eskom back to the DOE. So there's a bit more certainty, hopefully, coming in that area. And uh, I suppose, uh, you know, we've also got that renewables program, uh, which has been ticking over. They did hit a wobbly last year when we uh, couldn't get good connection, which relates to uh, Eskom's financial crisis. But they, they were able to close the, most of the projects at the end of the year. So, and they were able to prove, approve two new um, preferred bidders also in December last year. So if the final round three projects, I think they're two outstanding, close, and they should close in the next few months. And uh, we have these preferred bidder projects, the two uh, concentrated solar power projects closing maybe later in the year. We'll have a total of 66 renewable energy projects in some f uh, either in operation, because some of them are op operation, or in construction in South Africa. So that's a, a major bright spot. So we'd like to see the same happening now in DSM and the same happening in the baseload area. The baseload area is critical, especially now that we hear that Madupi is delayed again and Kusida is going to be delayed. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.